We're going on an adventure today to, yeah, pick something up. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet. We'll see it shortly. What's going on guys? Never Ate a Lethal Garage. We've kind of already started our journey. Sorry, I didn't pull my camera out in front of the house. We left at 2 a.m. this morning and we're headed up to just above the bay, Santa Rosa, I believe we're going to is where this car is at. Got my son Kyle way in the back, probably can't see him very well. Got maple fed here. And we're just on a journey to pick up this car. So I've been looking at it for a little bit. The guy, I'm actually buying some parts from the guy and he just so happened to have this thing. And I talked with my wife and I was like, you know what? This could be a good car for the boys. Something that we can work on together and get up and running and get it on the road. Because the Lethal Classic is not gonna be driven by all of the boys or maybe even any of the boys. <laughs> <laughs> ever no no i'm sorry so uh yeah so we're on this journey it's like less than 500 miles it's gonna be a long day of driving it should be well we're making pretty good time right now so we left at two what is it 6 21 so we've been on the road for four hours ish and uh yeah we got five hours to go you know driving the suburban it's a little annoying so we're cruising through the outskirts of san francisco at this point and feels like we're going 45, right? I mean, do you guys agree? It doesn't feel like we're going fast. We're just like, eh, what? why is everyone driving so slow? And then I look down, I'm like, oh, we're going 70. Kilometers an hour. Cover the trailer. Kilometers. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we got the trailer, so we're going 90 kilometers. Yeah, it's just, it's, it's weird. Like, the Suburban is the only vehicle I've owned that makes me feel this way. It makes me feel like I'm driving slow motion around everyone else but in reality we're like literally going a few miles over the speed limit so i don't know do you guys do you guys ever have this i don't have this feeling in my camaro ever probably because i'm always driving it fast because it's loud it, yeah that's probably the other thing i don't know post down below did go across the Golden Gate Bridge. It was the first time Kyle ever, well, Maple, ah. went on the Golden Gate Bridge. And I think it was the first time my son went over it. And uh, Kyle, tell him how exciting that was. Uh, Not exciting. <laughs> no. I don't know. It was, it was overcast and rainy. Okay, we made it up here. My audio's working, so that's great. Kyle, I'm not showing him the car yet. At least I don't think I just did. What do you think? It's really cool. Is it cool? You guys, you guys ready to see this thing? So let me give you a little backstory before I show you. So the purpose of this car, well, the purpose of my 71 was to build it with the family, which we did. The kids came up, helped build it, did a lot of stuff they could. But once it was painted, I didn't want any kids near it. Just, I, and car guys out there, you guys probably know this. And you're like, oh, it's just a car. It's just paint, whatever. Like, no, it's not. When you put that kind of work into it, it's more than just paint. So I wanted to get my son, obviously my oldest son here, Kyle, is gonna be driving in a couple years. And he's got a lot of brothers behind him that are gonna be driving too. So I wanted to invest and start building up a fleet of lethals for all the kids so they have cars to drive because it's a few years away, but you know, it costs money and I wanna help them and help them succeed. And in this, we picked up, you guys ready for this? Are you ready? A Canadian. A, Canadian. <laughs> a maple fed. So we picked up a 1970, or as some of you guys like to call it, a 70 and a half original RS. So this is a number matching car, minus it doesn't have its original wheels, obviously. Matching motor, matching trans, which is kind of cool. I got the paperwork in the car. I can show you that later, but this is it. This is the car. We're going to do some work, obviously, motor trans, get it so it's road worthy, get some interior in there. You know, I have tons of extra parts from the 71 already. So a lot of that stuff that I didn't use on the 71 or I changed my mind on will go on this car and uh, we'll try to keep this one as original as possible. Be the kid's car. So I think it's bad. We'll just do a little walk around. So obviously it's, it's, it's been loved by a few people and, and maybe not loved by a few people. <laughs> Someone attempted to mold this side, it's halfway okay. We, we might be able to fix that. But I mean, this is mostly a complete car. I mean, it's got a love dent already, so we don't have to worry about that, you know? First dent's already done, right, Kyle? <laughs> so, yeah, this is it. So 
we're gonna get it back to the lethal garage. Hopefully we'll we'll open it up and I'll show you all the details. Oh, the motor's right here. So it's uh, originally 350, but yes, this is 70 RS. It was a V8 car, it's an automatic. Yeah, I think that's all we need to get into now. So let's get it back home and we'll really deep dive into all of it. it it does need tender loving care before it's going to be roadworthy again, but we're not going to fully restore this. The, the goal is to do as little as possible on the interior and stuff to get it roadworthy. Obviously get the motor and everything dialed in, suspension dialed in, so my kids will be safe. But outside of that, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So let's get back to the garage and we'll really deep dive into this bad boy. So one thing real quick, I, I don't have my mic, so it's going to sound, uh, audio is going to change, but uh, the hood has no hinges. <laughs> we found that out. So we went to Home Depot and got some more straps. Hopefully that will keep it. We have the strap going up over down the cowl and to the, the subframe. So the straps are on pretty tight. Should keep the hood from flipping off. We'll see, we'll find out, but yeah, let's get back to the garage. Okay, so I had meant to do the follow-up video last night when we got home, but ended up getting home at 1 a.m. So yeah, no, that, that wasn't happening. And now the sun's setting today was kind of a family day slash I don't even know, but clean some stuff up, clean the burb out so there's not all the parts and pieces in there anymore, but here's the car. So the car, <laughs> here's the motor. We'll start with the motor. So the motor is in dire straits. The goal here, we're gonna take it down to a machine. Well, first I'm gonna clean it up. I'm just gonna pressure wash. I'm gonna disassemble the heads and get everything just taken apart. And I'm gonna take the block and the heads down to a machine shop, have them checked out get them decked, finished, all that stuff. Basically, we're gonna rebuild this three, original 350 that belongs to this car back up. So we're gonna try to reuse as many original parts as we can for this because the goal with this car is to try to keep it as original as possible. The transmission that came with this car is in the trunk. Unfortunately, I think it's a 300 or a 350. I don't even know what transmission it is. I have to go look. I can't get the trunk open right now, but there is obviously some surface rust. The nice thing about the car is there's not a ton of rust in the metal panel. So if you look at the front fender corner, they're basically clean. I mean, this is a California car. There, there's just not a ton of rust all over it. There's a couple little specks down here coming through the, the paint. That could be DA down and we'll, we'll get a good look at how bad that is. I don't know how bad the the lower rocker is, but it doesn't look atrocious. Inside the car, this is where <laughs> the sky's the limit. So one thing I did pick up is original RS metal, front and lower, or top and lower valance. Not for this car, I picked this up for the 71. There may be something we found out with my car with using the OER parts, but I'll get into that into another video. But obviously the dash needs to be replaced, has no gauges, has original steering wheel, not, I think that might be the original, uh, well, original steering column. I think that's original steering wheel. And obviously the door panels and stuff need help. It needs an all new dash, which is fine because I have, so we have all the lower parts, even for that side, those are in the trunk. But the upper side, I have an extra one of those. So even easier. Interior wise, we're gonna clean it up. I'm gonna do a manual media blast and clean up. There's no major rust spots in the floor pan. So that's a huge positive because we could just clean it up, put some rust preventative stuff on there. And I literally have interior carpet, back seats and front seats for this car. So we can get that squared away real quick, throw in some uh, new seat belts and um, you know, just clean it up because the idea here is just get this car running. This isn't gonna be a restoration car, save it from forever. It's gonna be a, let's get it looking as good as possible. I mean, it has a terrible headliner. <laughs> the headliner is falling. There's a lot of rust under the headliner. Um, it looks like it's mostly surface. It's not coming through the top. The top again looks pretty surface driven, but um, you could see the inside, uh, panels that cover up the pillars and stuff look pretty rusted through so we'll have to pull those off and see if we can get those cleaned up should be pretty easy to do because um, again we could just pull those off media blast them spray them a flat black and call it a day because again this car does not need to be perfect um, the other side of it is the wiring most of the wiring is there we just have to trace back and find everything but it's encouraging to see everything because this car is basically a complete car in regards to 
all the parts and pieces that get really expensive to buy. So it has all the pullouts and the kick panels, all that stuff. Again, we can pull those out, clean them up, put them right back in. It, it, this isn't gonna be a show car. This is gonna be a car for the kids. So obviously we'll put new, um, new seals all around the car. These ones are, are toast. Shockingly, these ones have survived. Little bump stops on there. I have brand new handles. I have brand new locks. I have brand new just to, just about everything for this car. So it'll be a really quick thing just to replace, get it in there. The big thing is, is getting in here, getting it all cleaned up and uh, going from there because obviously the stash is seen much better days. So it's just, it's nice to see that everything is mostly here. And I think, let me see if I get the key. Oh, come on. Oh, that key does not want to move. Okay, maybe this key's not going to come out. Come on. I think this might be the trunk key. Let me see if I can get that off real quick. I don't know if that belongs to the trunk or that. That might be a glove box key. There is no key. There's no key for the trunk. Oh, it just opens. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, wait. What else is in here? So there's the transmission. Here's the lower portion of the dash. Sorry, I'm gonna use my shoulder. To, oh, there's there's the key and lock to the. <coughs> Looks like the door seal. I don't know what that goes to. Original California plate. Hey, man, these are old plates. Oh, this is the under, this is for the, uh, the air, for your feet. Yeah, see, look, it has the control unit still for the AC, so cold, hot. So this was an AC car, nice. Um, but it's got all those pieces, and here's the transmission. Obviously, it's completely trashed, so that is what it is. But you can see the original color of this car looks like it was silver. Um, I have to look, I have the build sheet, but the only real rusty part that I noticed on the trunk was right in here. So this part of the trunk is basically falling apart. I could probably have it fixed. I, I'm not a welder, but I know someone who's a really good welder. He might be able to patch that up and get rid of some of that gross metal, but that's for a much better day. Not this day. <laughs> the best part is we drove home and nothing flew out. I didn't even realize this didn't close. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, whoever previously owned this molded in the three-piece spoiler. I mean, this side actually looks really nice. The problem was on this side, water or something got underneath and started causing their bond over to just crack and dissolve and fall apart, which is unfortunate. So, but all of the bottom balance doesn't look bad. I mean, obviously it's missing its rear bumper, but those are so cheap. I mean, that won't be original, unfortunately, but that could be a, a quick and easy thing to replace. It's got rear tail lights, that's cool. My, my 71 didn't even have all of that. And the other thing, like all of the trim is here. All of the original trim. My car didn't have any of that. I mean, my car had nothing interior wise, so this is a huge step forward. And it's really what makes me feel like, okay, we can get this car in a functional state pretty, I don't wanna say pretty easily. There's definitely a lot of work here, but the doors close. So there's a couple dents in here. I think I can pull these dents out. This one's, I don't know why it looks like it's burned. So this car was in a burn area uh, back in the Kincaid fire in 2019. I think that's where some of these burn marks may have come from. But you can see the original door interior obviously is destroyed, but pretty easy replaced. And uh, yeah, I, I was tempted to take a vacuum in here today and just clean all this crap out. There's a lot of like the original floor tar crap that they put down is still in there, so not as great, but all the brackets and bracing are there for the dash, which is huge. 
again all of the original under dash pieces is there so are there and they're still bolted in place so i can literally pull those off get the new dash and just bolt them all right back in i'm, I'm kind of excited about that it still has still has the uh oh those are gross oh yeah no those aren't moving um yeah some visors need a little bit of help but uh yeah kind of encouraged a little bit encouraged maybe i took more off than i could <laughs> maybe a bit more than i can chew but i honestly think we can get this car in a functioning state and get it going i mean the fact that all the pedals are there even has me excited it's just in my brain because you know obviously i did the 71 I'm just like counting all of the dollars that I'm saving that all this stuff is here because it's pretty easy to recondition a lot of this stuff. A lot of it's just steel, it has surface rust on it. So get a little media blast on there. I could take it down to a local powder coater and I could get them black and looking brand new again. So it, it really isn't that difficult to do. So, and these panels are easily replaced. So that's not even a big problem has all of its glass unfortunately the front windshield does have a crack so we'll pull that out now the one thing that is bad is the front cowls so these cows are pretty eaten away it's pretty common on uh camaros and uh firebirds the a pillar down here the water just comes right down sits pools in here and it just eats it away the other corner is even worse on the other side but it is what it is. I do have a cow hood, but if we're gonna keep this original, that is the original hood with the car. I mean, I could just keep the hood and put it in storage. I don't know, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Should we put the, the, the Advanced Metal Direct cow hood on there, or should we should we leave it factory? Factory. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of a lot of Vice Grip Garage lately. His videos honestly encourage me to make this purchase. It could be a bad thing. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. So it is an original RS car. So these panels look great for an RS. Obviously, trans, motor, all original. So the car has a little bit going for it. Has a lot of bit going against it. But uh, I think we can fix this thing up to make it a good project for me and my sons. And I say sons because they're all going to be driving this thing at some point. I mean, look at this guy. Whoever did this spent some time here. If you end up watching this video and you did this work on this car, I'd love to know. Like, you could see they, they spent time. I mean, that is no easy task to like feather that in and make it look good. Like, I'll give you some kudos, man. This this looks really clean. I like the look. It's super clean. I like every car that, that does that. I think it's just a, a really clean look, so. <sighs> Still has its original undercoating even though it's disgustingly dirty. <laughs> Someone tried to paint this car red and uh, kind of failed at it, so. But yeah, this is the new project. So I don't expect us to pick up and start working on this car probably till the springtime, mainly because I just want to finish buttoning up a few things and be able to save up a little bit more money so we can get stuff done. If you guys aren't aware, the 71's coming along really nicely. It currently just doesn't have brakes. So everything's basically done on the car, except for like the carpeted soft, like all the soft interior stuff, because I'm gonna do that at a later date, but the motor runs, all the drive line's good. We just gotta get the brakes reconnected because we welded the rear axle tube. So I had to pull the rear end out to get it welded. And now I just gotta get the brakes all back in, rebled and good to go. And then obviously our, well, I haven't posted this video, but we had a, a leak on the front line. And so I ended up buying just a brand new line to replace that as well. So <sighs> this car is basically drivable without brakes right now, but we'll get the brakes sorted and I could start taking her to car shows even without an interior because you don't need no interior for a project car, right? And then Lethal is back in the garage, my 16 drag car. It's been a long time coming for this car to come back. And it hasn't been because anything was wrong with the car. It was primarily because this car was taking up all the room in the garage. And I finally just said, okay, we're at the point now where once I get the brakes buttoned up, I can actually pull the car in and out. So we can bring this bad boy home. So I had 
her all nice and cleaned up, interior, exterior, and I put my California car cover on her, she's good to go. So we'll probably take her out racing and get back to the track uh, when the weather really starts cooling off. I just, I don't wanna go out in heat. I'm tired of these hot track days and I, I wanna get out there and run the car and see what we can actually do with it. The car is capable of eight seconds. I just don't know if I'm gonna be the one that can actually drive it to an eight second pass. I, I hope I can, I'm gonna keep trying. That's just, it's where we're at. So the car's making really good power and all sorts of stuff. And I, I wanna share something with you guys in a future video that's gonna be happening with this car. And it's all good news. So, but it's just something I've decided to do as a backup as once racing really starts picking up, we're, we're gonna hit it. We're gonna hit it hard and uh, see what we can do. So, and I got a backup plan if something catastrophic happens. I don't hope anything catastrophic happens, but you just never know. So I do want to, it's a huge shout out. We surpassed over 70,000 subscribers here on the channel. So for those of you who've been watching for ever, and those of you who are new to the channel, thanks for following along and thanks for being a part of the channel itself. Uh, never dreamed in a million years we'd hit 70,000 plus subscribers. So pretty awesome to see. I mean, maybe one day we can hit that 100K mark. I, I'm now hopeful and want to try to go for that goal. Uh, just, I don't know, it just seems like something of an accomplishment that, you know, as people get interested or want to follow the content, it, it just, you know, something to be proud about. And I think it's also something for you guys to be proud about because if it wasn't for probably 99% of you guys, uh, the channel would have never grown. You know, you not telling your Camaro friends or anything like that, like, you know, I would have had to live off of YouTube search and Google search, which I'm sure a lot of you guys found the channel and the content because of that. So, and hopefully I can keep making better and better videos. I'm not the best at making videos, but I'll keep trying. So content's coming and uh, I'm excited to welcome, I gotta come up with a name for this car. So that the maroon car, like we got the unlethal bolt, lethal burb, Lethal Camaro, Lethal Classic. What do we call the red car? It's not gonna be red. I think, I'm pretty sure my goal right now is just DA it down and spray it matte black. So keep that in in uh, consideration. But uh, help, me, help me come up with a name for the new uh, 70. So we got the 70, 71, 16, 21, and a 19. Too many cars. This is, it's getting crazy. What am I doing? As always, guys, thanks for watching, and until next time, see you on the roof.